everybody. I'm Deborah Booker with Deborah Booker Designs and I'm starting just a little bit early just to make sure that I have all my ducks in a row. So let me know if you can hear me all right. I had my microphone on last week and I didn't think it was working and then when I took it off everybody said it was working. So let me know if you can hear me okay. Um, and hi Pamela, let me know if you can hear me all right with this. Um, I have a couple of projects going on and uh, let me bring you up on my phone so I can just see any questions. Okay, I can see the questions. I don't have a helper today, so um, I'm on my own, and so things might be a little awkward, but I see um, my friend Pamela and Stacy and Lisa and Kathy. So um, again, I'm Deborah Booker with Deborah Booker Designs. I'm in uh, Surprise, Arizona. I have two shop locations. One is at the Brass Armadillo um, in Phoenix, and then I have a second location in Heber Overgard uh, up in the White Mountains. And, um, and I've been a Dixie Bell retailer for a little over two years, and I'm an elite dealer. So if you're new to Dixie Bell and you're wondering where you can buy products from, um, you can go to the Dixie Bell website and click in the top left-hand corner for find a retailer and find a retailer in your area. Or you can order directly from Dixie Bell or you can order from me. So uh, whatever it works out best for you. But uh, welcome to Chalk paint 101 and I'm so happy to be able to spend this hour with you. Um, we're continuing on a couple of different projects. <clears throat> Hi from St. Paul, Minnesota, sunny 50. I don't know what our temperature is here today, but uh, it's pretty darn nice outside. I can say that. It was windy and chilly a couple of days ago and it's just perfect today. Um, okay, so two things that we're going to work on today. Um, I'm kind of, I'll check back and look at questions as we go along, but um, since I don't have a helper, I'm kind of doing it all myself today. So I wanted to show you on this nightstand, I've been doing two nightstands for the last couple of weeks, and, and I'm In good focus here. It's actually easier just to move the table. And so what I want to finish up today is that I, uh, on Friday night, put, I just put the um, wood tool, the wood grain tool on here and made the wood grain design. Let me move you guys up closer so hopefully you can see what that actually looks like on here because it was just um, this was kind of like a barnyard red it had no wood wood grain to it at all and so using that wood grain tool I put in the wood grain on it and then <clears throat> yesterday I put one coat of the no paint gel stain on it and I'm going to put the final coat on it today and I'm just going to Give it a wipe with a tack cloth just to make sure I don't have any dust on it. Okay, and finally, I am learning to remember to put on gloves when I'm using no paint gel stain 
because otherwise I look like an auto mechanic. I go around with all of the stain all over my hands and in my cuticles. And not that there's anything wrong with being an auto mechanic. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I really prefer not to have all of that stain in my fingernails. Um, okay. And I know that this comes up backwards on here, but this is what it looks like. It's no pain, gel stain, comes in a can. I think it's, um, it's a one pint can. And this color is walnut. And it comes in several other colors. It comes in um, colonial which is very pretty actually. It's uh, it, colonial black and espresso, which I just used on a set of bar stools that came out really pretty. And it comes in white and it comes in a really pretty gray. Are you guys able to hear me okay? Okay, so I'm just gonna stir this up a little bit. And it looks like it's really dark on here, but you can see, since I've applied one coat on here, it's not as dark as it looks when you put it on. And, and the trick to it is to put on smooth, thin coats is the trick. Don't hurry it along. And I'm using an applicator pad and these are available with um, Dixie Bell or they're available on my website and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on one end and just put a nice even coat across the top and I'm going to come back over here and put a nice, even, thin coat along the edge. And this has like a little indentation in it, so I just wanna go back over it to make sure I'm getting an even coat in that indentation. So you can see that the second coat really darkens it up These have been really fun nightstands, and in the comments, I'll go back and post what they look like when I started out with them. I've painted them with, um, I just went blank. I should remember since I, it's one of my favorite colors. Oh, Palmetto. I painted them with palmetto. They were originally like a barnyard red. They're kind of an unusual design. And this is actually the second set of the same style that I've done. And if I find them online again, I will go get them because it's really a popular nightstand. And if you have questions, as soon as I finish this, I'll go back and look at your questions and get them answered for you. I love using the No Pain Gel Stain. It is the only product in the Dixie Bell line that is not water-based, and it does have VOCs, so it is kind of stinky. So when I'm using it, I just put my um, essential oil diffuser on with some lavender and eucalyptus to help offset the odor from this. But you can see how what a huge impact it has and how stinking easy is this. It just doesn't get any easier than this. And if you just remember that this didn't have any wood grain on it at all when I started with this, and now it looks like it has a beautiful wood top on it. so fun to do what we do, isn't it? I feel so blessed every morning when I wake up that I get to do what I love to do. And 
it's really fun to share it all with you guys, I have to say. I just want to get these edges. I get this one too. And I'm going to give it one more wipe since I went over those edges so that it's nice and even going across the whole thing. And voila, that is done. Now, if I had more staining to do, like if I had another coat to do, um, I would just stick this in a Ziploc bag and this will harden here, but then I can still use this end of the pad and I can still use both ends of this. If you're using no paint gel stain, when you're finished, you just need to throw your pads away. They're, they aren't good for anything else. If you're using these pads to put on um, top coats or even paint, because you could use these pads to do spindles on chairs and it makes it so much easier. Then when you're done, just rinse them out and throw them in the wash when you wash the rest of your rags and you can reuse these over and over and over again. So um, you get a lot of use for a small amount of investment. So let me walk it back around. It's kind of funny doing this with a microphone attached, but I've noticed that I wasn't being heard very well. So I'm just going to close this up. And I'm going to take off my gloves and turn the camera around. And see what kind of questions you guys have. Okay, it just says you guys are all watching, but it doesn't say that you have any questions. Um, Sue, you love, love, love no pain gel stain, and walnut is your favorite? Yes, I use walnut a lot, and I have done a lot of furniture with that one can, and I can do a whole lot more furniture, so it, you know, it's a great investment and it doesn't go bad. Um, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so then also the other day, I'm kind of like in a finishing up mode here, but the other day I had started working on um, this chair. And if you can see, I have another one here sitting here just like it. I was lucky to find this um, online on Marketplace the other day. I didn't find it, one of my friends found it and sent it to me. And so um, I put a bid on it and got it. And the fun thing about this one, I didn't know it when I bid on it, but this one actually is like a bar stool. So it's a little bit higher, but it's exactly the same design. And I don't know what, I kind of think that these chairs are like, um, early American, um, and I know that they've been around for a really long time, and, and I've seen them from time to time and never paid any attention to them. And a friend of mine, uh, when I first started doing furniture painting, she called me up and said there was this really nice chair in good condition over at some yard sale she was at, and did I want it for 10 bucks? And I said, sure. So this was the chair. It sat out in my garage in the heat because it's hot here in the summertime in Arizona. And um, by the time I brought it in last week, I had it literally fell apart. I had to glue all the legs and the spindles and everything back together on it. But it's it, it's much sturdier than I thought it was going to be. So it's in it's in good shape. But I plan on putting this chair on my front porch. 
and then putting a basket of geraniums on it, and I think that'll be really cute. Um, and I'm also teaching a class on this up in um, Heber Overgaard this summer, and so I wanted to have a, a sample piece done for it. And the colors that I'm doing this chair in are pretty basic, red, white, and blue. I'm using, <laughs> it's so odd to try to get things in the right place. So I'm using Yankee Blue, I'm using Barn Red, and I'm using Fluff. And last week I did a little bit of the uh, Yankee Blue on here and I painted the centerpiece Yankee Blue, and then I showed you how to put uh, a sticky stencil on here that I made for the stars. And then last night I painted the rest of this and this, and then today I'm gonna show you how to do um, stripes on the seat. Um, but first, before we get to that, I wanted to show you, um, the waxing on here because when I was painting it I didn't I wasn't real careful this just has one coat of the fluff and I don't really care that I don't have really perfect coverage on that um, because what I'm doing next and I did a little section of it right in here I'm gonna pull you in a little even closer here so you can see so I really want you to be able to see this. Okay, so over here, um, I did a little section of it with grunge gray wax. And I'm telling you, I love, love, love using wax. So this is the grunge gray. It comes in a four ounce size and it comes in um, a 10 ounce. And I was out of the 10 ounce, so I'm using up a four ounce on here. But honestly, a little bit of wax goes a long ways. And this grunge gray is a really pretty color and goes with a lot. And so I didn't want to use black and I didn't want to use brown on here, even though I could see what brown would look like. I wanted to actually tone down the white a little bit, so that's why I chose the grunge gray. And I'm using a chip brush. Uh, you want to use a good stiff brush. And in fact, Dixie Bell is coming out with some really nice brushes specifically for applying wax. And they're making the big announcement tomorrow to all the retailers. So I'll have more details and information of when we can order those and when, when we will all have them in our shops. Um, but you want a stiff brush. And what I do is I just use these chip brushes and when I'm done, um, I just put them in a Ziploc bag and wait for, I have a different brush for each color and I just put them in a Ziploc bag and then pull them out for the next project. And I know one of those Dix, new Dixie Bell brushes is got a rounded pointy tip on it or like the French tip brush would be really good for this um, because I need it to be stiff so that I can get into all of that pattern that's in here. And so I know it looks dirty and grungy right now and that's okay because it won't look that way forever. And I don't want to go over my stars because I do want my stars to be really bright white. I'm going to work this into the red. Just scrub it in. And you can see that when I get it scrubbed in well, that it covers up the brown of the chair. And that's another reason why I wanted to use wax. I could use a glaze and get a similar effect. But like I said, I really, really like using wax and wax is so easy to use. 
and the wax comes in some great colors. So all I'm doing is just rubbing that in. And it kind of looks ugly at the moment, I know. But things have to get start off ugly to end up beautiful, don't you think? So let me see what questions you have. Boy, you guys are a quiet bunch. So tell me all where you're from and if you've ever used Dixie Belle paint before and how long, if you've used it, how long have you been painting furniture? Now I'm gonna take a wet wipe and I'm gonna go back over this and just wipe this back. And so all it's doing is leaving that nice color and it's a soft gray. I didn't want to use the black because that would just be too harsh. But it's a soft gray. And it leaves all the detail of that chair. And you know what else? There's a lot of wood. Um, let me just move this in over here. There's a lot of wood. that has texture to it that is showing now that it has the wax on it. And we don't have any more of the actual chair color, the maple color showing back through. So you can see how easy that was to wipe on or to put on and how easy it is to just wipe it back and you can wipe back as much as you like or leave off as much as you like. And you can see how much more the detail shows on here than it does over here. And that's why I wanted to do that. Hi, Kathy. So you're from Juniper Hills, California. You're having good weather today, too, I, I know. Um, and you've been painting furniture for three years. Well, good for you. I love Dixie Bell paint. I really, really love Dixie Bell. And um, I hadn't used it for very long before I called Dixie Bell up and said, what do I need to do to be a retailer of your paint and your product? So the really cool thing is I don't sell Dixie Bell because for any other reason than that I just love the paint. I love the product. I love the company. Dixie Bell is a really great company. Um, it's woman owned. There's no VOCs. It's all made in the USA. And it's a really great paint product. And they're really, really good. They're really, really good to all of their retailers and their customers. They stand behind their product. They give all of their retailers so much support. So I really love Dixie Belle. So I'm just going to finish up this white and then we're going to go move on to painting the stripes on the seat of this. And then I have some questions that you guys can help me with because I need a little feedback. I always say when you're working on a project to let that piece talk to you and tell you what to do with it. And 
that's kind of what I've been doing with this piece is, um, you know, I'm happy with this up here and I'm happy with this here. I don't know what color I want to paint the spindle. And I painted the seat white because um, I wanted to put stripes on it, red stripes. But honestly, after I painted it white, I was like, ooh, that's too much white. So I'm hoping the stripes tone it down. And I will be waxing over it also. So I'm hoping that that tones it down. But you guys tell me what you think because I still have these sides to paint and I still have legs and more spindles. So while I'm doing this, you think about what you think the next color should be. I'm kind of thinking that it has more than enough white on it at this point and that it needs to be either the red or the blue. But I'm open to hearing what you guys have to say. just going to wipe this back and this top part will be finished. I'm get myself a pad. What do you guys think? Have any of you guys used the waxes. I used black wax on those nightstands and it, I love using black wax on the brighter colors. Um, like black wax on red is really, really pretty too. It just deepens it, gives it more interest. And another really good point about the waxes that kind of sets them apart from other uh, paint products is that the wax is water-based. And that's really important. So let's say on those nightstands that after I waxed them, I didn't like them, it wouldn't make any difference. I could go back and repaint over them. If I'm using any of our competitors, their waxes are oil-based and it would matter and I would have to take mineral spirits and get that wax off of them before I could go over and repaint them and you know that's what we say all the time when we're painting if you don't like something just repaint it well that works with Dixie Bell but that doesn't always work with other products so um, and it's important when you're doing refinishing that you understand if a piece does have wax on it and you don't know that it's Dixie Bell wax, you are going to have to use mineral spirits to get that wax off of it. Okay, so now I'm going to bring this camera down so you can see the seat of this chair. And just for time's sake, I went ahead and found my center on here. Let's see. I found my center and um, put that on there just to save a little bit of time. If you haven't ever done stripes before, Thanks, Pamela. I love the gray on there, too. Um, if you haven't done stripes before, they're really, really easy to do. And so let me just show you the best way I know to do stripes. So I found my center. 
and put that on. And then these pieces here are just place marks to lay down my second piece. And you probably can't see this, but I am just taking a little bit of the sticky off of the tape just by putting it on my apron and patting it down just to take a little bit of the sticky off of it. And then you lay it down and kind of at a awkward angle here. And just lay it down adjacent to your little marker tape. and then burnish it down really well with your hands. And then I'm going to show you a trick so that you don't get any seepage when we start painting. And I'm going to just pull up my marker. Move it over here. So Kathy, you say blue on each spindle side and on the legs and red to decor decorate the circular indents. So you're saying then, um, I'll move the camera back up, but I think I know what you're saying. So um, I'm glad you're saying blue too, because that's kind of the direction I was leaning, but I really wanted to get somebody else's input on it. Oh, okay, so Kathy, you're saying the spindles that are in the back of the chair, on the inside of the chair, you're saying do those red. Okay. <clears throat> what do you guys think of this idea on this chair? Is this something that you would like to do yourself? I thought it would be fun to put on an entryway or a front porch. Um, you know, I've done the porch leaners with the flag on them for um, 4th of July and for Memorial Day and Labor Day and all of those. And I thought it would just be fun to have something a little different than what everybody else has for those holidays and it's so nice that you can leave them up for such a long time. And I thought it would be really cute to have something to put a potted plant on. I'm just gonna put a basket with fake flowers on it. <laughs> okay, so this is gonna be a little tricky over here on this edge, but Let's see. Do I still have you guys? Yeah, I still have you in the camera. Just measuring this out. So where you guys see white right now, is going to end up being red. Hi, Lindsay.
So does anybody know what the, what the style or the name of these chairs are? Because I'd really like to find some more. Like I said, I'm teaching a class on this technique on these chairs this summer. And it sure would be nice to be able to find more of these chairs for anybody that's interested in doing one. So they don't have to track them down themselves. Okay, so if you're just tuning in, I use these little pieces to space out the stripes so that I get them all nice and even. And then I burnish them down with my hand really well. And then there's another trick. Um, so that you don't have bleed through. That I'll show you. And the reason why to, I guess they call it defuzz your tape is just so that when you pull it off, you don't pull any of your paint off with it. I don't expect that I would have an issue with that on this piece because I did paint my two coats on last night so that they would be good and dry today. But just so you know, if you are pushing the envelope and you've got, you know, you've got your two coats down and you dry them with a hair dryer, it might not be dry enough for you to do your stripes. I mean, I've done it before, but I've also pulled my paint off before, so that's not fun. Kathy, I was thinking some gold highlights would be pretty cool, too. I could use the uh, the Dixie Belle mousse for that. Would be really pretty. That mousse is awesome. And it goes on so smooth and easy. Hi, TJ. Tell us where you guys are from. If you're just tuning in, say hello and tell us where you're from. And what we're doing, the project here is doing a patriotic chair for the front porch or on your entryway of your house. just eyeballing that one back there okay so the trick to not having any bleed through is first of all burnish it down with your fingers really well so that's step number one and then oh I need to get this off Burnish, burnish, burnish. How many of you haven't done stripes before? They are so fun and easy to do, and they always have such impact. People are always just so delighted when they find stripes, like on the sides of furniture or inside uh, the sides of drawers. You can always get a few bucks more on a piece of furniture if you've gone to the trouble of um, adding details like that. Okay, so now I'm going to take the 
white and with my fingers, I'm just going to burnish these edges. And what this does for you is if there's going to be any seepage of your paint, it's going to be the base color that you put on. So if anything's going to seep, it's going to be this white. And it doesn't have to be a lot. And while you're doing it, um, just be burnishing it again. And you do it on each edge. So Kathy, you won't have any more trouble with bleed through. This is the trick. And stripes are easy and fun and have a lot of impact. So does this make sense that you're putting on the same color as your base coat? And that if anything is going to seep underneath there, it's going to be this color. It's a good trick. And after you learn this, you'll want to put stripes on everything. And the painter's tape is really good to use. And painter's tape comes in different widths and sizes. So this one was an inch and a quarter and they have bigger and they have smaller. So I just keep painter's tape on hand in different sizes so that I have just exactly what I need for whatever project. I wanted to mention to you guys also that prepping your project is super important and like this chair I said had been in my garage for two summers and it had come from a yard sale and this chair was filthy I mean really really filthy and um, so I washed it well with the Dixie Bell white lightning and then rinsed it really well with fresh clean water which is super important. You don't want to leave that white lightning on your piece. And um, rinse it off really well before I ever started painting. And I sell a kit that has everything in it that you need. It's called my furniture prep kit. And it just makes it real easy for you um, if you're not here locally, it's available on my website, but you don't have to figure out all the things that you need to paint your furniture with. It's all figured out for you. And so in the kit, you get to pick out an eight ounce color of paint of your choice, any color. It comes with scrubby soap to clean your brushes with. It comes with a jar of white lightning, which will just about last you the rest of your life because you just mix two tablespoons in a 32 ounce spray bottle. And that's what you use to clean your furniture with. Um, it comes with a satin top coat, which is the most common top coat that people use. And I didn't mention, but when I did this um, waxing up here on the top of the chair, I forgot to mention that I had painted the white and then I top coated it with satin top coat. And that's what makes it so easy for me to wipe back that white. That's an important little detail. Now, if I hadn't done that, it still would have worked. 
um, it just wipes back easier. It doesn't grab onto your paint. And so this kit has a, the satin top coat and then it comes with a sanding block, which is, you know, like if you like to distress furniture, the sanding block is perfect for um, distressing. And it comes with a tack cloth and you saw me use the tack cloth over on the nightstand before I applied the um, stain on it, just to make sure I didn't have any dust or anything on top of it. And it comes with a cleaning sponge to use when you're using your white lightning to clean your furniture. And really very importantly, it comes with a how-to booklet. And I just mentioned that because some people have never seen those how-to booklets from Dixie Belle. And they're really awesome because they list every single product that Dixie Belle has. And it tells you how to use each product and it tells you what the cure time is on each product. So they're really awesome to have. And when people order from me online, I always include one of those how-to booklets in every sale. But I've also included them in my um, kits. So um, it just makes it, if you're a beginner, beginning painter, that just makes it easier for you to get started. You don't have to know everything. Makes it easier to order. And if you're getting any benefit from this um, video, if you would do me a favor, we're not allowed to say the S word, so I like to say Sunny and share. If you wouldn't mind sharing this video and I see some hearts and, and likes going up, I appreciate that too. Um, I really do. And if you have any questions, don't be shy. Let me know what you're thinking. So Sonia, you said it looks like a fun chair. You're watching from Joseph City, Arizona. Hello, Arizonan. By the way, the crow flies, that makes us, I can't see the rest of, I can't see the rest, but I'll go back and answer it. But I love having a fellow Arizonan on here. So I apologize for the noise, but I need to dry this real quick before we go to the last step, and that's putting the red stripes on. I think that's dry enough. We'll move to the last step here. And I'm using barn red for the stripes. That's the same, the same color that's on the back of the chair. When you're using chalk paint, you always want to start with a damp brush. And normally, I would just spray on my chair seat, but I don't want to have a lot of water on it, so I'm just going to spray my brush. And let's do this. This is the most fun part. So everywhere that there is white, we're going to paint the red. Isn't this exciting?
And isn't this a pretty red? Dixie Belle has about four or five different shades of red. are going to be amazed. Oh, I guess having my head in the middle of the camera isn't such a good idea, huh? was a little bit tricky. Hi, Linda. So you're watching from North Ontario, Canada. 14 Celsius. I have no idea if that's, I'm assuming that's pretty cold. Well, I'm painting this chair for the 4th of July, so I'm getting a head start on it. The reason why I'm getting a head start is, like I said, I've had this chair in the garage for two years, and I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it two years ago. But the problem is, is time gets, ahead, gets away from me, and I don't get it done in a timely way. And I have a couple of classes that I'm going to teach this chair, the process of painting this chair or any chair that somebody comes up with that they wanna do in this technique. And so I thought, well, this is a good opportunity to get started on it ahead of time instead of waiting to the last minute and being rushed. <clears throat> and it's a fun project. And it's thinking outside the box. I love it when I watch these videos and somebody does something that I would have never thought of myself. And then shares it with all of us. It's so wonderful that Dixie Bell provides all of the teaching videos for all of us. That's how I actually got started with Dixie Bell, is I watched, well, first of all, this lady, I used to live up in Prescott, and she had a really beautiful shop and the most beautiful furniture in it, painted the most beautiful colors I'd ever seen. You know, most places just have everything painted white because they think that that's what sells, but... What sold me was all the beautiful colors she had. And after the third time I was in there, I got up enough nerve to ask her because I thought for sure she was mixing her own paint. And she said, no, she said, I use Dixie Belle paint. And I'd never even heard of Dixie Belle. So then I went and found a retailer, bought some, painted a dresser with it, and then the next week I was on the phone with Dixie Bell saying, what do I need to do to sell your paint? So I want, I want you to know that's a little bit dangerous. If you haven't used Dixie Bell before, you might end up in business in a couple of weeks after using it because it is amazing paint. And I felt that way from the first time and I still feel that way. It is truly 
amazing paint. Okay, and in case you're wondering, if you just tuned in, then you don't know that the top half of the chair is painted um, with, a, with stars on it. And I'll, I'll move the camera up so that you can see it. Um, and I waxed the detail on the top of the chair. But I'll be waxing the same gray wax on the bottom of the chair also. When this is dry, I won't be doing it on this video, but I want to tone down the white a little bit. And this isn't even the whitest white. This is fluff, which is probably the most popular white, but there's a whiter one that's called cotton, which is really pretty too. And it's like really white. Okay, so I'm gonna get the dryer out one more time. Now's a good time. If you got questions, let me know. And we're gonna dry this coat and put on another quick coat and then pull this tape off so you can see what this looks like. how awesome this is going to look. Okay, I think that's, I'm rushing it along a little bit, but I think that's actually dry enough to get another quick coat on here. I know you guys are being super patient, but it's going to be worth it. This second coat should go on much faster. So in case you're just tuning in, I used the tape to make the stripes so that they're evenly spaced. And then I used my finger and some of the white from the base coat and went down and burnished all the edges of the tape so that we wouldn't have any seepage or leak through or bleed under, whatever term you want to use. And then I painted one stripe on and I'm just giving it a good second coat here. Also earlier in the video, I did um, no pain gel stain on the top of a nightstand that I've been working on for the last couple of videos. It's the last step on it and then it is done. It has new hardware on it.
Did you guys say you just heard a plane? I'm so used to them flying over that I I just tune them out. I don't even I'm not even aware of them. I live five miles from Luke Air Force Base, and that's a training base for the I think it's F-32 fighter jets. I should know these things. Pamela, you can say what it is. What jets are those that they do the training over at Luke? When I do notice them, I just always say to myself, it's the sound of freedom, but honestly, I, I'm not even aware of them most of the time. Okay. Close this up. Get it over there out of the way. Get that brush a, a spray to get it in the water to wash. I'm sorry, you guys, this is the last time I'm going to dry it, and then I'm ripping that tape, tape off. F-35. Thank you, Pamela. Here's the big reveal, you guys. Are you ready? Come on. Give me some hearts. It's looking good. Give me some hearts. Can you guys see? Oh my gosh, look how pretty these are. So far, so good. Look how straight and crisp those lines are. What do you guys think? No seepage. You couldn't have any more contrast with white and red. If there was bleed through, you would sure see it. Da, 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 da. Okay, so my friends, if you think this video has been any benefit and somebody might enjoy seeing it, I'd appreciate it if you would sunny and share this with your friends. 
And before we finish, I'll move the camera back up so that you can see the effect of the whole chair so far. And if you want to see, I'll be working on it again this week. And if you want to see what the finished piece looks like, then please go to my Facebook page, and it's up at the top of this video. It's Deborah Booker Designs, but I did put the link in. And go to my Facebook page, and I will have finished pictures of the nightstands. And um, either finished or an updated picture of where I'm at on the chair. We got one more tape to pull off and then we'll scan up. But you can see how fun and how easy <clears throat> these stripes are and what a huge impact they make on here. Da, 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 da. Okay, so I'm going to move the camera up so you can see, especially if you've just tuned in halfway through so that you can see the whole thing. Let's see, move that around. Okay, so I think it was Kathy that was saying, thanks Linda. Yeah, with the glaze it will be amazing. Um, so you can see, the whole thing and I think it was Nancy that or maybe it was, yeah it was Kathy who had said to paint this part in the Yankee blue I think that's the blue I used yep Yankee blue and paint the spindles in red and then I have legs down here if I'm painting these and the Yankee Blue, I think I'll paint the legs in Yankee Blue and maybe the spindles in the red. I just think there's enough white on here that I just need to balance it out, give it, you know, like frame it in like we frame a picture. Um, but anyway, here's, here's the seat. And we all learned how to do perfect stripes today with no bleed through. And then this hasn't been waxed down here. And then this, all this white part has been waxed. And then I'm going to go back with a dry brushing brush and dry brush white back over the top of this. Um, but I'm really happy with how it's turning out so far. And it's really been a fun project. And I hope that you guys have learned something today and enjoyed this. I'm having fun with this chair. So um, if you have any questions that I didn't get around to answering, I'll be happy to answer them. I'll go back after um, this is finished. But I've run about 10 minutes late, so I need to probably get off of here. But thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, Linda, that is a stencil. It's a stencil that I made uh, off of my Cricut, but anybody that would like to have a sticky stencil um, or a Mylar stencil with stars on it, just give me what your measurements are and tell me what um, size star. Like these are one inch stars that I put on here, um, but I'd be happy to make it for you. So um, just send me an email and let me know. I'd be happy to do that for you. And if you guys have any other questions, let me know. I'll be answering them shortly. Thanks so much for watching. You guys have been really great. I really appreciate it. You guys have a good night.